Hi everybody, here's another extensions to Mendel, right? Extensions, right? We're going to talk about sex influence traits. Sex influence traits are traits that are autosomal, so not sex linked, not X linked or sex linked. They are autosomal, okay? But, and so they work by the rules of Mendel, the genotypes. Do not change, okay? They are just expressed or the phenotypes change, right? And that's pretty much the rules of all the extensions. The genes do what they're supposed to do. All the crosses follow exactly Mendelian genetics. It's how the phenotype, either the alleles interacting or the genes interacting. And in this case, it's more of an allele interaction Right? But because it's sex influenced, it's really based on hormones. Woohoo! Right? So an example would be having a beard and a goat in the heterozygote, it looks dominant in males, and in the heterozygote, it looks re recessive in females. So let's take a look, shall we? Hmm, we shall. Here you go. Here are some goats. If you have a beardless male, right here, homozygous, and a bearded female, which means has to be homozygous, right? What are the options? The F1 are both heterozygotes. In the male, the heterozygote is bearded. In the female, the heterozygote is not bearded. Now, if we look at the same cross, except we're taking this F1 here, not the same cross, a different cross. We're taking the F1 on F1 action, right? Two heterozygotes, two heterozygotes. We should get here, one-fourth of them are going to be, of the males, are going to be homozygous. One-half one are going to be heterozygous, and one-fourth are going to be homozygous recessive exactly like the genotypes say they should, right? Where here, the homozygous normal has no beard, homozygous mutant has a beard, and the heterozygotes have a beard. In the females, right, homozygous wild type, no beard, heterozygous no beard. The only time we see a beard is when it's homozygous recessive, okay? Or homozygous for the mutant bearded mutant. Okay. So if you can see, that skews the phenotypic ratios. Not the genotypes, right? Genotypes stay exactly the same. Do the Punnett square, okay? And see what you would get for males and females and determine that this is autosomal, but it's sex-influenced. Sex-limited are also traits that are autosomal genes. Again, inherited by the rules of Mendel, genotypes don't change, right, phenotypes do. Which, this goes back to expressivity and penetrance. So it is expressed only in one sex and zero penetrance in the other regardless of the genotype. So this would be looking in chickens in looking like a rooster or cock feathering. Okay, so if we look at the right, a homozygous recessive male has all the fancy, right, what you'd recognize as a rooster or cock feathering. A heterozygous male or a homozygous dominant male have hen feathering, right? That looks like a female, but it's a male. And then in the female, it doesn't matter what the genotype is. They're all hen. So the phenotype, right, zero penetrance. Zero. Zero do we see this here. In males... Homozygous recessive, heterozygous is hen, homozygous is hen, but in females, all of them are. 
So these are much more difficult traits to look at in questions. And so for sex limited or sex influence genes, you'll be given some extra help or some hints in the question rather than trying to figure it out just by um, numbers of offspring. Okay, so you'll be given some setup that gives you a bigger clue because these will be difficult to figure out. There should be problems in the homework that you need to do that will help you as well. Sex limited traits, another example is precocious puberty. Again, zero penetrance in one expressed only in the other. If we take a look at that one and we look at the crosses, right, if we look at the we're not going to call it P, right? We're just going to call it A cross because this guy is heterozygous male to a normal puberty homozygous recessive female. Put those guys together, right? If they're homozygous recessive, they're always normal, whether they're male or female. Again, heterozygous in males results in precocious puberty. What does that mean? Early puberty. Precocious means something early. You do something before everybody else. Okay. If we do this um, with a homozygous dominant male and a heterozygous female, again, heterozygous is normal in females, right? And we already know that homozygous recessive is normal in males. So normal, normal, but she's heterozygous, right? Here's the gametes. Again, what do we get in the F1 generation? If you do the Punnett square, you're going to see that the heterozygous in the male is precocious. Again, the homozygous is going to be fine, and none of the females are going to show it, okay? So half the sons and none of the daughters show precocious, because zero, zero penetrance in the female only shows up in the male. And we are not going to cover cytoplasmic inherited traits this semester. We have time. It's really interesting. I really like it. We just can't do it. So again, we're not going to do that. And that's it for this little lecture capture. I hope you enjoyed it. And do some problems. Thank you.